So we have cages, we have available dates in cages, and we have snakes. Time to book a snake into a cage in one of those available dates. This turns out to be one of the more complicated things we're going to do in this application. And there's a lot of like input and juggling stuff. So I'm going to paste a few things here just about asking questions about the dates and stuff. And then we're going to go and write the database queries from scratch. So let's start here. We're going to start by making sure you have an account. And then we're going to get all the snakes and make sure you have a snake because having an account is not enough. You also have to have a snake you can put into there. We're going to ask some questions about when do you want to do this? We're going to use uh, Python date util to parse that. So just like before, we're going to do a little error handling to make sure like you're not trying to book some sort of reverse thing like I check in before I check out. I right, check out before I check in. Something like this, right? Okay, so then the next thing we need to do is find out the available cages. And this is where it gets interesting. So we're going to write a function called get available cages. We're going to take the check in, the check out, and the snake. Oh, we also need to figure out which snake you want. So first of all, let's do a, you know, enumerate, list out your snakes, and we'll say snake one, the snake two is that, and you'll pick the snake. Okay. So take our snakes, pick that. Got our k our time, and then we're going to go to the database and find a particular cage uh, that we can work with. Now, that's not all there is to it. So this is just going to get us the cages that could be booked, and then we have to ask. Right, that's this little section right here. Then we have to let the user pick a cage, and we'll find the underlying booking behind it. So let's write this function. So this is going to be a date time, date time, and a snake. You, of course, don't have to put the type hints, but I find like at the data access layer, it's really helpful. Maybe through, you can see through the rest of the application, I'm not doing this, but at the data access layer, I find it really helpful to say like these are the things that go in, these are the things that go out. This is like how we're working with the database. Okay, so here's where we get down to business. We're going to come down here, let me move this up for you. So we need to do a couple of things. We need to find all the cages that have bookings that are not booked between this time and that time, all right? And we need the snake information because we not all cages allow poisonous snakes and they don't all necessarily fit. If I have a 20 foot snake, I can't put it into a two foot cage. So let's just do a little quick um, rule of thumb to say, if your snake is four times longer or more than the cage, then the snake can't go into it, right? Snakes can curl up, but they can only curl up so much. So we'll say something like the minimum size of the cage we're going to get is snake dot length over four. Okay, so this this is going to be part of our query. The date's going to be part of the query, and the whether or not it's venomous or not. So we're going to do a few interesting things here. This is definitely a, one of the more complicated queries. So we'll go to the cage, and we'll say objects. And when you have these complex queries, I find it's nice to spread this across multiple lines. So I'll say dot filter. And multiple filters, and these are effectively ands. So I'll say square meters. Now I'd like to say, let's say equals min size or, or greater, right? Just like we saw with the dollar operators about in, there's one for greater than or equal. And we can say the square meters are greater than or equal to this minimum size. But that's not the only thing that we need. We also need to go and do another pretty wild thing. We want to go to the bookings. Now remember, just refresh over here, we have a cage. The cage has a bookings field. We go to the definition for bookings. Bookings have a check-in date and a check-out date. We want to work with that. How do we do that in Mongo Engine? We come over here and we can traverse that hierarchy with underscores as well. So we can say bookings dot check-in date. And we want to have the check-in date before or equal to the check-in that was passed, right? So the time you can check in has to proceed the time this person is checking in. And then we'll do something similar for check out. Okay, so this is part of the query. Now, if the snake is poisonous, we also want to say that they allow poisonous snakes. So we'll say this, we'll say if snake dot is venomous, we need to augment this query. So we can do that because it hasn't executed yet. It's like the potential to be executed. So we can say query equals query dot filter. And what uh, is the thing? Allow dangerous snakes. That's what we want to work with. Equals true. Because non-dangerous ones can stay in cages that will either allow or not allow dangerous snakes. But if it's venomous, we have to have this 
additional criteria. And maybe we want to have some kind of order by, like we'd like to show them the cheaper ones. So let's go like this. We'll say cages equals, and we'll finalize the query like this. We'll say query order by. Now you don't do this sort of uh, default, this named parameter type thing for this. We want to order by price. And the default is ascending. So cheapest ones first. And maybe you want to see the biggest ones first um, as well. So we'll say square meters like this. So we're going to say first order by price, lowest to highest, and then show us if like the price is the same, show us the largest ones at that price level down to the smallest ones. Excellent. So this is pretty much working. It turns out, it, it looks like it's going to completely work, but it turns out that there's a challenge we're going to run into. And in PyMongo, this is straightforward to solve, although you have to use a lot of operators, these dollar operators to make it work. But I haven't found a good way in Mongo Engine. And so I still find the on balance that working in Mongo Engine, even for this query, is, is better. But here's the problem. What this query is asking, you're probably thinking it looks right. It, you know, it takes a moment to realize the challenge we're hitting here. What this query says is go to the cage and find me the cage with a square meters at least minimum size. That's totally fine. That works perfectly. And it says, show me where there's a booking greater than checkout. And there's a booking, um, oops, this should be greater than. That was almost an error. So where there's a checkout date past, equal to or past where I'm willing to check out for my snake. The problem is, if I have, let's say, 20 bookings in this cage, right? Uh, I probably want to check one more thing, but I can just check it uh, down more, we're gonna have to do one more bit at the bottom. But the problem is, what if there's two bookings? One that starts way in the past, but the checkout is like one day later. And then there's another one where the checkout date is way in the future, but you can only check in one day before. And these are not the same bookings, right? There's a booking where the check-in date is before the check-in, and there's a booking where the checkout date is after the checkout, but those are not the same. You need to say there's an individual booking, not um, like some set of bookings where one matches one clause and the other matches the other. So the way you do that in Mongo is you say dollar element match. I think it's L match. match something like element match is the, the <laughs> description of the thing. So you can say both. It must have both of these. But I don't see how to do that in Mongo engine. It seems like it should be possible. But uh, it certainly is possible for equality, but for the these operators plus element match didn't seem to work for me. Anyway, if you figure out, feel free to use element match. I didn't, so I've got to add one more line here. And I'm just going to copy that over real quick, and we'll talk about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let's go and actually, these are the cages we care about. I'm going to iterate over the query, which executes it here. And... Remember the cage, each cage contains a number of bookings. For each booking, I want to check that both the check-in is before and the check-in is after, and that the snake ID is none. So it's not already booked during that time. So if it's both available and the check-in check-out date uh, matches, then we can make that part of our final cage there, our final cage list. Okay, so... And it says it returns this, but actually what it returns is a list of cage. There we go. Okay, so that's what we got to do. If I could get element match to work with greater than less than in Mongo Engine, this would not be necessary. You could just straight up run that query. Uh, but anyway, it, it's not a huge deal. Remember, this set is already filtered down to where significantly, right, where the check-in and check-outs do match. It just happens to be maybe one more thing is missing there. Okay, so we're getting the available dates. So let's come back to our guess here. We've got our available cages. Now we just have to like show them to the user and let them pick it. All right, so let's just take some pre-written code for this. There are a certain number of cages available and we're gonna enumerate over them and don't need the average rating right now. Do it like this. So we're just going to print out the name, the square meters, whether it's carpeted, and whether or not it has toys. We don't want that to be true, false. Let's put that yes or no, like more friendly, right? And if there's no cages, sorry, there's no cages. But if there are, we'll ask you which one, and we'll pick that out. You know, zero-based, of course. 
And finally, the final thing to do is going to be book a cage. And then actually, we'll just give out this nice little error, me this nice little success message saying, hey, you booked it for this time. So the last thing to do with this booking a cage is to actually book it. So let's go over here. A PyCharm right at one more time here. And now what we're going to do is we're going to loop over that cage's booking. So the way it works is they've selected a cage. They haven't selected individual booking. So we just have to go one more time over the bookings and go, uh, let's find a booking within this cage, which we know exists because it's in the list, and let's assign it to the snake. So we'll do something like this. We'll come down here and we'll start out by sending this little booking to nothing, just in case for some odd reason we don't find one. I want to go through and again do this similar test as we did right there, right? We've got to find the available booking within the cage. We know it exists, but we've got to find it. And then down here, we're going to just set a few things. Say the booking dot guest. You can get a little uh, IntelliSense intelli intelli uh, auto completion if you want. Set the guest owner ID. I guess we probably got to pass the account as well. We'll say account.id, say booking dot set the booked date. It was booked right now, regardless of when the booking was. Then we also need to set the snake. There we go. And then we got to go back and save it. But remember, don't call save there. We call cage.save. Okay, excellent. Now, I think it just believes that's a misspelling, but I'm going to say it's not. All right, so that should let us book a cage. Woo, that was a tough one, right? So pretty interesting query. We're using the operators, greater than, less than. We're traversing the hierarchy. And uh, like I said, we're sort of effectively in memory applying this element match. Element match works in Mongo Engine, but I couldn't get it to work with both element match and the operators. So anyway, this will be fine. Come down here and given a cage, we'll pull out the booking. We probably could structure it slightly differently so we could skip this step and somehow capture the booking directly, but this is fine. It works plenty fast for what we're doing. Set the, hey, you booked it values of the booking and call save. All right, I think it's time for us to test our, our book, a, book a cage. And I noticed I almost forgot to add this here, state.active account, when I added it below. So let's go and run this. We'll come in here and we'll be, whoops, be a guest. And let's go ahead and log in. And let's see our snakes. So we have these two snakes. Neither of them are venomous. Let's book a cage. I'm going to start by booking this. Now, how do I know that date? Because over here, we have two available bookings for the large boa cage and these times one to six in January. So we'll go two, let's say two to four. Should be fine. Got this, go to four. And it says which snake. Remember, we it matters the size of the cage and the snake as well as whether it's venomous. So we'll pick slither. And hey, look, the one cage is here. Let's say, all right, let's book it. We've successfully booked the large boa. All right. Now, we haven't written view your bookings, but we do have that, I believe. We might have that for the other one. We go over here as a host, and we log in as Michael. I think we might not have implemented this as well. But we can list our cages. Yes, there we go. We can see that we have two cages, Bully's Cage and Large Boa. And look at that one. Somebody has booked this one, this slot for the Large Boa Cage. Yes. So it looks like that worked successfully, just like we expected.